Cole Fogel here on A Healthy Balance, and I'm here with two special guests, Cindy. Hello. And Henry. Hello. And they are the owners of Wild East. A Healthy Balance. So, Henry, where are you from originally? I'm from Finland. Okay, and what's Finland known for? Uh, maybe Santa Claus. Uh, number one thing, Nokia, uh, cold weather, weird people, licorice, something like that. Licorice? Yeah, many lakes, like the biggest number of lakes within one country after Canada, actually. How many years ago did you come to Taiwan? Uh, that was 2012, March, so it's soon gonna be nine years. What brought you to Taiwan originally? Uh, I worked in a Finnish fishing tackle company that time, and my boss asked if I wanted to work in Taiwan in one of the, uh, how do you call it, Feng Gong Xi, uh, like affiliate companies. So I took my lunch and said yes, and I moved in. And you had no idea that your life would forever change. That would lead me to my second question. After you arrived, when did you meet this lovely lady here? I think it was then, like two years after. It wasn't planned, of course, we just met in a very romantic romantic circumstances in a nightclub. Well, I was gonna say that's how I met my lady as well, so true love can be found in a nightclub or a bar. Yeah. Actually, we met first in Uzo in a restaurant, but, but then I think it all, like, the spark was at uh, room 18. A lovely journey. 18 TC, yeah. So you met in a restaurant, you partied in a nightclub, and how long were you dating before the two of you, like, what, moved in together? How long was it? One year. One year, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. Dating for one year before living together? Yeah, yeah. in Taichung. In Taichung, yeah. okay. So you were living in Taichung at yes. this point? Yes, yes. Yeah. Did you always have a desire to live in this atmosphere where we are right now in Manzhou? Or was this a surprise? It was a surprise. Okay. I didn't plan to, to Manzhou. I had a dream by the sea. In this Taiwan? Is, in Taiwan, this is close enough. And you, sorry, you, where were you born originally? Taichung. You, oh, you're from Tai. you're a Taichung yeah. okay, yeah. where I lived many years of my life. Um, and I, I wanted to mention that I met Cindy like over a decade ago, very briefly, like we didn't really know each other very well, but crazy how life kind of brings people Circle back closing. together. Yeah. yeah, I think it's beautiful yeah. though. Like I was really happy when my wife was like, oh, that's Cindy. We've met her before, we know her. Yeah, that's crazy. So how long has the Wild East been the Wild East? Almost two years and a half. Okay, so what brought you specifically to Manzhou? Ma am I saying it right, Manzhou? Yeah, that sounds yes. good enough, yeah. I think. Okay, so why Manzhou? Yeah. Um, I can answer that, because we'd be coming here more and often from Taichung when I started surfing. That was about five years ago. And then, by that time, I had already worked like nine years for the company and I felt like I'm not going to lear learn really how to surf in the office and we'd be coming here more, more often, so we just started thinking that why not move here, why not live here by the sea, like enjoy the life while it still is there. We're looking for places around to, to rent and we just stopped by Manjo Fruit Juice Shop and asked the lady that do you have any dragon fruit? Exactly. That's I've been there. Fruit. Okay, cool. That's the best fruit juice you can buy in Taiwan for 40 NT. But, uh, I, my favorite is Holongo Jia Jian, so dragon fruit with ginger. I'll try that. Oh. But Manjo turned out to be like uh, reasonably priced, close to Jiala Shui Surf Beach, nice restaurants around. So, what is unique about Manjo? Well, we both like the location for the fact that it's not where the crowds are. It's you go to Kending Main Street and there's a lot of noise, a lot of people. That's the, like kind of the most touristy spot in the area. But Manjo is not far away. It's 20, uh, 25 minute right away from Kending if you want to go there. But you won't bump into other tourists in this area. And there are some cool locals like uh, natural spots like waterfalls and Lanrenshi Pubu, Chikong Pubu. So you did some renovating to the Wild East. Did it take you a long time to renovate this place? You're yeah, I was I was going crazy. It was it was an old house, nothing on there, no fences. Uh, everything had to be renovated, pretty much at, at least the surfaces. Yeah, so we painted it all inside, and we put the wood paneling to cover the ugly tile, and then we picked all this bamboo from the beach and covered the uh, the walls of the garage. So how long have you guys been married for? 
Three years? Three years. Yeah, three years. So we can say honeymoon still? Three years? <laughs> I guess we need to celebrate the five year anniversary. Yeah. A little bit more romantic. We didn't have a wedding. We right. Just, right. We, just, we were busy that time. We'll just sign the paper. But honestly, the wedding means nothing. It's every day after exactly. that wedding, I want to say, that matters. Right. Yeah. Every day matters. Yeah. Fully agree. Do you guys ever plan on having children? Is that something you want to do? And we got our little children at home already. We got four adapted animals, you know, injured animals. Dogs? Cats? Both? Yeah. yeah. So the cats are from Taichung area. Two cats? Yeah. Do got, they have names? Yeah, got and Boo Boo. Boo Boo and... Gaga. Gaga and Boo Boo. Yeah. And your dogs? Tuanku and Xiaoguan. Uh, is missing both from legs because of the traps the local some people put them for hunting wild boar or even like hunting monkeys that steal the food from their plant plantation. So, but many cats and dogs end up in the traps, and that's why you see so many like cats and dogs missing limbs. Like that dog only has the real legs, but he's the happiest dog in the world. Please stop using traps. There has to be a better way to protect your land or your whatever you're yeah, trying to protect. Definitely, definitely. We should learn to treat animals the way we treat our family. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah exactly. But were her parents accepting of you from the beginning or were they were they did they want to give you some time and be like, who is this guy? Or did they welcome you into the family? Was it immediate or was it like not immediate? We're gonna test you and see who you are. Was I, it like I remember the first dinner I had with her parents and her mom was really cold. She wouldn't, <laughs> she wouldn't really like look at me in the eyes or talk to me much at all. Like, like this is my little girl. What are your intentions? Exactly. Like, what are your intentions exactly? But then like little by little it got warmer the whole like relationship. But and now we are like we are we are super close and I I really enjoy the whole like I don't mind at all them coming here for two weeks and us hanging out. Every so day. where will you celebrate Chinese New Year? Will you celebrate here in Manzhou or will you go back to Taichung for Chinese New Year? I guess for the guest house business, yeah. gotta be here. Yeah. Uh, so, so will your parents come here? No, actually they will stay in Taichung, but oh, we okay. celebrate Chinese New Year in a different time. Oh, you, you'll spend time together yeah. in a different time, yeah. Cindy, do you have a favorite food, if you've tried it, from Finland? Do you have a food that where you're like, wow, this is really good? That's a very difficult question. Have you been to Finland? Yes, I've been there twice. Oh, One cool. time was in summertime. Time was last winter. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about the weather there? I love it. I love the summertime and I also love the winter time because I'm really proud to ski. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you started getting better at it. Yeah, so the favorite food maybe berries? Oh. Wild berries. Mm. Cool. You mean like little like yeah. blueberry kind of berries? Yeah, or? Blueberries. And they can just pick up wild from the forest and yeah, everywhere in the summertime. So if you were to describe where he comes from, like visually, what do you see when you're standing outside his house? What's around his family's? Well, his family has an island, so the island is my favorite place there. Wow. They have the, uh, the family has smoke sauna. Oh, they burn wood. Yes. yes. That's my favorite place. And no electricity on the small island. Also, the TV. No refrigerators, we store uh, the food, the meat under the ground. Oh, cool. That's Very pretty. primitive. That's You'd love it. Bro. Well, I would love that. Yeah, were, were you like blown away when you yeah. had this, uh, the first time you had what, he, yeah, what you I just love, described? Yeah, like, yeah. I like, heard it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that little hut on that island is the oldest fishing hut at that lake, which is the 15th biggest lake in Finland. Wow. Uh, my grandma, uh, grandpa bought the island like in the early 60s. We're Are you homesick? Do you miss going, like do you miss home? Uh, I do, yeah. Of course I miss skiing and I miss my family and friends and all that stuff. And something that I don't really miss, but I realized I was missing when I get there is the food. Like, oh. I don't really think of Finnish food, but once I get it, I'm like, ah. Oh. What is your favorite food from Finland that you would want to describe to Taiwanese people? Um, I think it's reindeer stew. Too. Yeah, it's like. Uh, try it. I think you had. A I'm picturing like this yeah, like really dark did. version of Santa Claus, like horror movie where he kills his reindeer Sorry. and like reindeer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you you eat that with uh, um, kind of sour lingonberry jam and mashed potatoes and kind of thin sliced 
uh, reindeer meat. Would, would this be a Christmas kind of meal that people might eat? Uh, no, or it's this a just a regular... It's a northern speciality, like a northern Finnish speciality. That mm. You don't eat in the south that much, but because we have plenty of reindeer in the north, so it's, it's not a seasonal food. Where do you see yourself settling down in the future? Do you think you might one day be an old couple living right here or something like this? Like, what do you see in your future? Here, mm. you know, something or live somewhere like this. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I quite like it too. I can, I can imagine living here the rest of my life. There is a big concern though that lurks just behind us, the mainland China. It, does, it does cross my mind, obviously. Exactly, and, and just like reading the news and seeing what's going on in China, uh, how they are expanding, and you know, it's it's alarming. I I don't. I don't feel too relaxed about it. Perhaps one day, and I say this with love, that China would be run differently in the future, because nothing against the people of China, that they would be run differently in the future, and they would have the same level of freedom that we have here, that China will one day be a loving, peaceful place too. And then we will make the world a better place. Yes. Henry and I do share something in common that we were talking about off camera. We both like stinky tofu, chodofu. Where is this special chodofu place that you mentioned to me? Right, it's in Manzhou, near the uh, elementary school, right? Uh, is that no. an elementary school? Junior high. Junior high, all right. What do you like specifically about it? Just like, is it like a crispy outside, soft inside? Right, see me, you can describe it, but yeah. that's, that's that's exactly. The is there a special name for the in Chinese for this particular style, or? See, what I love about Chodova, I always thought Chodova was just one style, and every time I go to a different night market, different town, it's different everywhere you go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't want to have it too often though, but like no. once a month is, yeah. is good for me. Welcome to the Manjo Chodofu. What's your name, sir? Eric. Eric, and where are you from? Tainan. Tainan, and you, you're you born and raised in Tainan? Yes. And you are visiting Cindy and Henry? Yeah. And we were just chatting, and you told me you did some traveling in your past, because I was asking, where did you learn English? And you said you spent some time... In Australia for two years. What were you doing there? Chicken factory, wine factory, strawberry farm, grape farm. What is it you want to do in the future? Uh, police officer. Police officer. <laughs> uh, what kind of police officer? Like, just like a street cop? Or would you want to get like undercover style? Like, what, what would be your ultimate dream job? Uh, normal cop, but yeah, it's okay. <laughs> like, are you the guy, if a fight breaks out, you get in, in the middle of it and say, hey, 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 stop. Is that no, your part? I'm actually just hiding and watch. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about Chodofu? Is it one of your favorite foods in Taiwan? Yes. Where is the best chodofu that you've had in Taiwan? Actually in Hualien. Ah. The place called Yuli. They got the best chodofu in Taiwan. What, what's special about the Hualien? What normally, style? Normally the chodofu, it can be too smelly in the city because you never will call the cup, right? So, so the one in Hualien is extra tall? So go to Hualien, what's it called again you said? Yuli Chodofu. Okay, I should be in Hualien in Chinese New Year time. I'll check out okay, that okay. one, okay. You'll love it. Okay. I love it. I feel like we should do an island-wide tour of Chodofu in Taiwan. Why not?